Welcome to the world famous Queen Mary, sister ship to the infamous RMS Titanic. Home to thousands of paranormal sightings every year. Queen Mary's a suspense thriller. It's about a family of emigrants that are murdered on the ship in 1938, and they take possession of a family in the present day and try to escape the ship. But the crease to their plan is nobody can escape the ship once they die there. You want to go on the haunted tour? Come on. Come on. Hi, Mom. I'll be fine. Anne is a media consultant, and she is ambitious, and she needs to look after her child, who has special needs, so maybe needs a bit more money. Well, uh, one day he has this dream, and he says to me, Mom, I had a dream that I was on the Queen Mary. And so, you know, it got me thinking, um, what about doing a book from a child's perspective, <laughs> exploring the ship, and some of the stranger stories? and she finds herself in a little bit of a predicament because the Queen Mary's haunted and the ghosts take an interest in her and her family. They are stalked and then possessed by another family, the Ratches. It's him and his wife and his child and they're the vaudevillian act, the diabolic Ratches. David and Gwen find themselves in third class, as that's all they can afford. And they realize that in order to really get the opportunities that they want for their daughter, who is a brilliant dancer and singer and performer as they have raised her, they realize that they need to sneak their way somehow into first class. I should go and introduce myself. No. You always say, if an opportunity comes along, grab it. Yeah, I do, but never beg. Opportunity is slippery. It's like trying to catch a fish with your bare hands. The trick is to wait and let it come to you. Then, when it gets close, grab it. David and I go back to our cabin, the famously haunted cabin of the Queen Mary. And earlier in the night, I open my little pretty sequin clutch bag. And while I'm rooting around in it, I pull out a tarot card. And the card is, in fact, a sacrifice card. So this bodes ill for the family. Why do you have that? I'm in the park set in 1938. I'm the guy who knows the truth and what's going on. But I am totally conflicted because I have to keep it to myself. A man roaming freely is why the ship is faltering. If you've ever been on the ship and you've walked the deck, there's something very, very eerie about the location. Um, you can almost feel like You've stepped out of time. So it's the perfect venue for a film like this. You literally walk through that feeling, whether you're a believer or non-believer, that there are ghosts. Join our resident guides as they lead you into the depths of the RMS Queen Mary in an effort to connect with spirits who still call the ship home. For 31 years, the Queen Mary served as a majestic city of the sea. Now she's dropped anchor for the final time closing out a career unequaled in the history of commercial sea voyaging. This was the last crowning glory, in some ways, of traveling by, by ship. It represents the end of an era. For me, the main character in the film has always been the ship. This is a ship that was born during the Depression, survived World War II, and then thrived in the post-war years. Queen Mary should have sunk many times. There was a huge wave that hit it. It was in the war. It sort of was really resilient, which they say is to do with this folklore that we've got in the film, which is the burial of a body inside its bowels. After you know a bit of research, I found some pretty interesting mythology on foundation sacrifice. According to an old engineering tradition, to guarantee structural integrity, one ought to bury a human inside of the walls. This kind of tradition has been around Europe, it's been in Asia, it's been in Americas, and it's been in Ireland as well. It's a piece of mythology from around the world that, you know, strangely, all these different regions kind of came up with the same story, the same idea. Oh God. Oh God. 
I kind of wanted to be involved in it because of Gary Shaw, who is an Irishman with a sense of poetry and who really is collaborative. The fact that we have a delightful, charming director was, was a major bonus too. He's got an absolutely fabulous balance between talking through it uh, and making sure we're all on the same page. It makes the experience creatively fulfilling. I went to see Gary in the production office and the whole film was mapped out on the wall. You could, frame by frame, play this film out. So it's so tightly constructed. We are doing relatively quick takes because he knows exactly what he wants. He knows exactly what he wants from every minor detail to what's going on in the background to what's happening in the foreground. Typical army engineer. Technically correct, but of no use to anyone. Enjoy your evening, sir. Ari cameras have built a new studio in Uxbridge, which we were the first people to go in and use and film in. They project the real world or whatever world they want it to be, the ship or a Los Angeles street or a bedroom, and you uh, behave as if you're in the room and the camera believes you. There's a antenna on the camera and it tells the, the screens where the camera is within this space. Working with the LED screens, it feels like theatre. It feels like you're in the world rather than guessing the world. It certainly was an amazing technology and an amazing experience to be in those rooms with that capability. I really think audiences will be mesmerised by this film. I think it's going to be visually stunning. If one is looking for a very smart, atmospheric, supernatural thriller, they're not going to be disappointed. I think they're going to be terrified. We are incorporating so many different types of horror all into one film, and I think that's going to be really entertaining. They're going to be on the edge of their seat for a lot of it. I want the audience to have what feels like a classical cinematic experience. I think that horror has a value in our culture. I'd love the audience when they've watched the film to be able to come out afterwards just feeling like they had escape. And also it's a love letter to the ship. I hope at the end I've, I've done it some sort of justice.